After more than a week of contentious debate between congressional Democrats and the White House, President Obama signed a massive bipartisan tax package Friday, preventing a big New Year's Day tax hike for millions of Americans. The bill extends the Bush-era tax cuts for two more years, keeping taxes at their current level for families at all incomes. By a wide bipartisan margin, both houses of Congress have now passed a package of tax relief that will protect the middle class, that will grow our economy, and will create jobs for the American people. The motion is adopted. The House gave final approval to the bill late Thursday night, overcoming an attempt by some Democrats to impose a higher estate tax. Though both sides had complaints about the measure, in the end it was a true bipartisan effort, supported by 139 Democrats and 138 Republicans. There probably is nobody on this floor who likes this bill. And therefore, the judgment is, is it better than doing nothing? Not sure I've heard anybody who really likes the bill. Perhaps that's the hallmark of a successful negotiation. Millions of taxpayers like the bill, which, besides extending tax cuts, renews jobless benefits for the long-term unemployed. It includes tax breaks for college students and lower taxes on capital gains and dividends. The package also cuts workers' Social Security taxes by nearly a third, meaning someone who currently makes $50,000 would save $1,000 a year. Experts say on average the package will save taxpayers nearly $3,000 next year. Many economists believe that will help spur growth and hopefully lead to the creation of new jobs. In the last three weeks, I've hired new, two new people with the hope that this would pass. But opponents see it as a dangerous addition to the spiraling debt. The economy is in a fragile state, but we do see signs of growth and improvement, and uh, just going deeper into debt is not the answer. None of the provisions in the bill are paid for, and the high price tag, $858 billion, will be added to the deficit. Kelly Daschle, The Associated Press.